Welcome back, troglodytes, to the Boxing Unboxing Vlog. Within these three boxes is one of my favorite Les Pauls that has ever been made, and I cannot wait to unbox it. I'm not going to tell you which one it is, though. But let's start with this. This is actually a guitar that I kind of forgot I bought during my huge shopping spree, and it took longer to get here because it came from Canada. And I finally once have a story of somebody shipping something UPS from a different country where they didn't try to charge me some type of extra importing fee. UPS is kind of famous for doing brokerage fees. Now, the last time I got something from Canada, they charged me 50 bucks. So I was a little bit scared when the seller said that they preferred to use UPS, but I'm kind of glad I went ahead and did it anyways. Now I thought this box felt a little bit light. I was expecting a original case, but maybe I didn't read the listing closely enough. But this guy actually had two guitars I was interested in. But once I figured out he shipped UPS, I was a little bit scared because these were right on the borderline of whether I should buy it or not. But the other one was a Tribal Flying V. I don't personally like the look of the model, but I think it's worth documenting. This guitar, eh, I guess it's a little bit boring in the sake of documentation because I've already done one, but this Gator case, I mean, it might not look like much, but I do like these hard gig bags. They're nothing really to sneeze at. So what's in here? Oh, it looks like we got a SG. Okay, now before I tell you about this, if you've watched my other videos, here's a test for you. What approximate year is this SG? You should be able to tell just by looking right here. It's an 80s model. Now, in case you don't know, it's because it's got the side output jack. That's why I really do like the 80s SGs. They don't really have much in terms of beveling right here. That's something that's different from like the 60s and the mid 70s ones. But I'm seeing some uh, interesting modifications on this thing. So our tuners have definitely been replaced. They say Schaller Deluxe, but it's a similar style. So not a big deal there. Truss rod cover looks okay, but what have they done with these pickguard screws? It, it almost looks like they changed them out to rivets. I'm not sure if it's possible to even get those off. Now the bridge, I was interested to see if this was going to be like a really rare ABR1 bridge installed on a standard, but no, you can see that's definitely been replaced because you've got the original style Nashville studs in there. Usually when somebody swaps a bridge out, they'll do the tailpiece too, so I bet that's not original. You can see this switch tip, it's flat, so that's non-original. These knobs have definitely been replaced. There's no aging and the font is wrong. Now, I hope the pickups are at least original. They're looking right to me, and I believe he had photos in there, so that's the only thing that truly matters to me when it comes to buying, like, a standard of something, is that the pickups are original, the finish is original, neck is straight, and no brakes, cracks, or repairs. Looks like we're missing a couple of screws here, too, and the strap buttons are also done up differently. So I don't think I'll be doing a separate review on this one just because everything's been replaced. But you can definitely check out this video if you want to see more on an 80s SG. Which one should we go for next? Let's go this Breed Love over here. I haven't reviewed one of those before. Jeez, this thing's so heavy. When this was delivered, I was like, oh, what is in this? Because I seriously couldn't remember. But that's because it was an eBay buy. I really don't check my eBay that often. And this was just kind of an impulse buy because it's a model that you never see. And it's the only model from this family of guitars that I was actually interested in doing a review on. Because I've talked about a few of them and despite a lot of people liking them, I'm just not a big fan of this series. They were a cheap Gibson back in the early 80s made of is I think it's called a polyphonic body, so it's like a resin body. That should be enough information for you guys. But Chainsaw Generation 2, this was a big deciding factor because I just hit the button on this one because it was an auction, but I was like, yeah, that price is just a little bit more than I wanted to pay, but to document one of these, I'm not worried about it. I've got some bubble wrap here. 
The bubble wrap always ruins the opening of the case. We'll do this one first. Okay, that should tell you everything you need to know. A Sonics, but what is this? Sonics artist? I bet most of you haven't even heard of this model. What is great about this one is it's not like a regular Sonics. I've heard a lot of people say that it's actually a wood body instead of the polyphonic, but doing some research online, that doesn't seem to be the case, but we'll have to find out once we rip it open. But it's not a bolt-on neck. It's set neck, and that's why I was like, yeah, I'm down for this one. And this one is in the early candy apple red finish. That's why it's got this whole orange peeling effect going on. Most people always think these are poor refins, but the early candy apple reds, you know, any type of metallic finish from Gibson is usually defective through finish checks or orange peeling or something. They've just never been able to figure those things out. So I can't wait to do a full review on this beauty. I am definitely happy I just went ahead and bought this one. And yes, it has the Moog Electronics built into it, just like a Les Paul artist. And then there was one. Come to Papa. I've, I've been waiting for this guitar for so long, guys. I did a wiring episode on it about a year, a year and a half ago when I first saw it. And it is an incredibly limited edition run. Japan exclusive, I think it's only 30 of them made. And in my Adam Jones video this week, I hinted that I bought a prototype. This is that guitar. Hmm, we've got a interesting double boxing situation going on here. The way they've done this makes it incredibly hard to unbox without making a mess because they have the original box folded in so nothing's going to really fall out. We'll fast forward through this. Here we go. One. Two and a half. Three, four, five. The most beautiful gold top you will ever see. It's beautiful, guys. It's simplistic. It's perfect. One P90. It's got the historic wrap tail. It's got the long ES295 style pickguard. But if that isn't enough for you, it's got the low Gibson logo like they did in the olden days. But look, it's got the access heel joint. It's definitely shaved away. It doesn't have any pointy bits, so it's not like the modern. This is just the ultimate player's simplicity guitar. Now, unfortunately, it looks like I might have received some damage in shipping. That'll happen sometimes where you'll get some finish check marks because that was not there in the description and this is a non-aged version, but I can't wait to tell you guys all about this model. I'll actually let you guys in on a little bit of a secret. I actually have another YouTuber coming over today and we're filming a bunch of collaborative work. I know he's excited to get to play this one. So the video is a little bit short today, but this is all the unboxings. As far as I'm aware of anyways right now, this is the only guitar I have to pack up. It did not take long to sell at all. This is the super heavy case. I'm filming this the morning after posting this, the Les Paul Traditional. That Les Paul Traditional website called GibsonTraditional.com, that's such an invaluable tool because traditionals have always confused me because there were so many different models. Now, that guy might not have every single little spec right of all of them, but it definitely helps a lot of people learn about these other models. I think it'd be cool to document one of each. I would have to tell you again how much I liked this guitar. I mean, it's got great wood grain. I'm not a huge fan of the finish, but some people like it. So that's all that matters, but beautiful wood on this one. But kind of a funny story behind this. So I listed it at um, $15.99. I wasn't really willing to come too much off of that price because I thought it would sell because it's such a beautiful example. But overnight I had received two offers and I saw these offers at like four in the morning when I was like half awake just checking my phone. 
I saw one was for like $1,300, and then somebody made an $1,800 offer. Now, in my groggy state, it's like, why would somebody offer me $300 more for the guitar when they could just, you know, hit buy it now? So I wasn't really awake enough to make any decisions then, so I just let it go. But then when I woke up at about 7.30, I saw that the guy just went ahead and did the buy it now. I'm guessing he saw that there was another offer. He wanted to make sure that he was the one who got it. I'd appreciate the $300 tip, but I definitely didn't feel comfortable taking it without at least talking to him. His payment hasn't cleared yet, but I need some sort of boxing for this episode. And if you made it this far, if you're watching this, could you leave some sort of comment? Because YouTube is having this glitch where the analytics and view count is just horribly wrong, and it's incredibly discouraging for me to keep making videos when it only appears like... 5,000 people are watching it or 10,000 when I was getting like 30,000 plus. Hopefully they fix that soon. But that's all I have for you today. Thank you troglodytes for watching and we will see you tomorrow on the next one. Take care.